Hi, my name is Victoria Finley Wolf, and I'm a designer for Sizzix. Today we are rocking the house. That is the name of this die that we're going to be working on today. It goes together very fast and easy, and you can scrap bust galore and just have so much fun with this die. For this project, you can use the Fabi, the Big Shot, the Big Shot Plus, or the Big Shot Pro. So today we're going to use the Big Shot Pro because I have it all lined up and ready to go. So I'm going to move this one out of the way. Um, this die is a little bit longer, um, so I'm going to use the extended pads on this. I'm going to make sure anytime you're running the dies through the machine that you have the proper pad on the top. Give this a roll through. You can cut up to eight layers at a time, which means if you're working on a quilt like this behind me, you can scrap bust and get all your extra pieces of fabrics that you want to use up, lay them all out on the die, cut them through. You'll have lots of options to lay your quilt out and play with the designs and the colors. So you can do a couple different layouts with this quilt. The blocks will always be the same, but you can really play with the value of the light and the dark and how you're laying those colors together. This one that I have in front of me here, this is my little house shape, the yellow pieces. Okay, and then the outside shapes are the dark in the contrast. So that gives me one look within the block. And with the pieces that I just rolled out, it can be just the opposite. This time I have the dark little house shape that's going to go to my corners. I'll have a nice yellow center. And my yellows this time are going to go to the outside. Okay, so now you've worked, you're able to work with the positive and negative shapes in this block. Um, it's going to go together in three little sections. So we've got one little house shape that's going to get the little um, quarter square triangles sewn to the outsides. And the middle piece is going to get two houses with just a square. All simple straight seams goes together very quickly. So let's sew these together and get our rows. So right sides together. The little shapes are already dog-eared so that when you're lying them right sides together onto the little house shape, they line up with the angles exactly how you want them. That also shows you where your quarter inch seam is going to go so you know where to start sewing. Okay, we're going to put those two pieces together. Quarter inch seam, always going to do my little back stitch. Okay, once I sew the first seam on, I can press that open, but I'm going to do the same thing to the opposite side now. Right sides together, my raw edges lined up, my little dog ear, the fit nestle in together perfectly so I know where they're going to sit and I can sew those together. Give those a good press. I always just press my seams to the outside so that everything stays nice and flat. So I'm going to do the same thing to this section and then I'll come back and I'll sew the square and the houses together to make my third row. Okay, we've sewn the three rows together. Now we need to put those rows together. I'm going to show you where you need to pin. We're going to put the first corner of the block together, lining up the two seams where we've sewn our little quarter square triangles to. I'm going to pin at a quarter inch through the seam and exactly through the seam on the square in the house shape on the middle strip. I like to pin that exactly where it needs to live so that when I'm sewing and I'm sewing a quarter inch seam that I can check as I'm coming down my row without having to over pin. I can just check am I still sewing a quarter inch seam and sewing that straight ends. Again the dog ears makes everything line up perfectly on this block. and I can give that seam a press to the outside so it lays nice and flat. And then we're going to do the same thing to the opposite side, right sides together. I pin those seams so that they line up. And then we've got the whole block sewn together. It goes together very quickly. So if you've cut out multiple layers of your fabrics and laid out your quilt and some of the blocks that you want to do, you can pick those up and chain piece those rows together and get the blocks together very quickly. 
And now I just want to point out a few things on this quilt that's hanging behind me here. So all of this is just this one block. But all in how you're looking at color and placement gives you lots of different variations. So as I showed you on the one on the table, where the middle square is the dark color fabric, you get the opposite sort of um, looking at the negative space, have a different effect. So this time you have the accent on the house shape, but this time you're kind of getting it on the, that sort of five shape uh, accent. So that part is standing out differently. So on the edge of this quilt, I've used all my darker fabrics with a light center. In fact, I used a stripe here, which was really fun to play with, to cut up and give lots of different motion inside of this quilt. Then you move to the inside of this quilt where I've used different variations of light fabrics. So finding all of my light fabrics, keeping the consistent with the stripes, and just dropping in all my light fabrics. So kind of like when you look at an antique quilt where some of the fabrics may have faded and start, you get different effects in the movement in the quilt by looking at the different variations of the lights and dark fabrics. So we have the dark fabrics, we have a focus on light fabrics, and then changing the darks and putting that to the center of the block gives you three different looks, all with just one block. So have fun. It's a great block to play with, lots of different designs, and it's just great for scrap busting. Enjoy.